Hi, I'm Jay. Welcome to Forbidden Files. We have talked about many pending cases, many of which ended up being forgotten. The case we are going to talk about today has undergone many reversals in more than 30 years because of its truth. It has been adapted into movies and novels many times and has never been out of people's view. It is the disappearance case in Ayers Rock. On the early morning of August 17, 1980, the Northridge police in Australia received a call from a panicked young couple who reported to the police that their child was carried away by dingoes near Ayers Rock. The police were shocked. Although there were packs of dingoes in the wilderness near Ayers Rock, they had never heard of a child being snatched by a dingo. The couple, Lindy Chamberlain, aged 32, and Michael Chamberlain, aged 36, were New Zealand citizens. Two days ago, they traveled to northern Australia and were camping in the Ayers Rock. Ayers Rock was called Uluru by the Aborigines. In the indigenous language, it means a place for meeting and gathering. The boulder was officially named Ayers Rock. In 1873, a European geological surveyor named Christy Goss accidentally discovered this wonder of the world. Since he was from South Australia, he named the boulder after Henry Ayers, the then Prime Minister of South Australia. At 863 metres above sea level, Ayers Rock is a huge reddish-brown rock with a length of about 3,000 metres, a circumference of about 9.4 kilometres, and a maximum height of 348 metres from the ground. It is tall and wide on the east side, but low and narrow on the west side, making it the largest single rock in the world. Located in the center of the entire Australian continent, it is also known as the Red Heart of Australia Double Quotes.it is also a local tourist attraction. On the evening of that day, Mr. and Mrs. Chamberlain stood at a campsite near the Ayers Rock. They were busy making a fire and cooking, while their younger son and daughter were sleeping soundly in a tent not far away. Everything was so peaceful in the sunset light. The Chamberlains had three children, two of them boys, and the youngest a girl, who was only two months old at the time. The couple named her Azaria Chamberlain. When they woke up the next morning, they were frightened to find that Azaria had disappeared. In the distance, they seemed to see several black figures moving away quickly. One of the black figures was a little larger than the others. It looked like a pack of dingoes wandering nearby. They tried their best to run after, but they didn't catch up. So they hardly called the police for help. The local police immediately assembled for Sezen, launched a large scale search and rescue operation with the tent as the center, but they failed to find any trace of Azari after a full day search. A few days later, the news of the missing tourist was broadcast on Northridge TV. However, a week later, in the wilderness about four kilometers away from the tent, the search and rescue team accidentally found a jumpsuit that had been worn by Azaria. There were holes and obvious bloodstains on the neck part of the jumpsuit. At t this point, the suspense over Azaria's fate almost ended. The Chamberlains were, of course, heartbroken. Local media have also reported the news and criticized the Australian government's inaction in the control of dingoes. As early as more than two years before the case, the local patrol police had issued warnings to alert the public to dingo attacks, but the authorities did not take any measures. At first, the Australian judiciary also classified the case as an accident. In December of the same year and January of the following year, two forensic doctors respectively made the conclusion that Azaria was taken and killed by dingoes. Time could heal the pain, the Chamberlains gradually moved out of the shadow and became pregnant again in 1982. However, shortly after the pregnancy, in September 1982, the disappearance case had a dramatic reversal. Based on the latest evidence, the prosecution believed that it was Lindy Chamberlain, Azaria's mother who murdered her, and her father Michael was an accomplice who covered up the crime. In fact, from the moment the jumpsuits were found, the Australian media became suspicious of the theory that dingoes took the baby, which they thought was too absurd. In addition, the non-mainstream religion that the Chamberlains believed in had a similar legend with the Aboriginal religion around Ayers Rock. Some people believe that the couple came to Ayers Rock to hold some sort of religious ceremony at midnight, and their daughter was the poor sacrifice. After committing the crime, they tried to cover up the crime with the story of the dingo attack. Of course, the theory needed to be supported by evidence. The primary evidence presented by the prosecution was exactly the jumpsuits that were found four kilometers away. 
The forensic expert Kenneth Brown pointed out they three holes on it were roughly 8 times 3 mm in caliber, and the two farthest holes were 5 centimeters apart. If the holes were made by dingoes, the spacing should not be so wide. Meanwhile, the edges of the holes were too neat, unlike those made by the teeth of dingoes. According to the habit of dingoes, they tend to tear the prey, so the edges of the hole should be very fuzzy. The only animal that could make such edge will be the leopard, which has sharp teeth and tend to bite the prey's throat when hunting. The two canines were just about 5 centimeters apart. However, there are no such large carnivores in Australia, then, how was such a neat edge made? The prosecution came up with another possibility, scissors, it turned out that a sharp instrument like scissors could poke out a hole like this. Cameron, a professor of forensic science, also found a mark similar to a bloody handprint on the baby's clothes, which he believed was left by an adult. At the same time, the prosecution produced the second evidence. The local medicologist Joey Cool found three spots suspected of bloodstain in Lindy's care and conducted a filter paper test on the spot. The filter paper immediately turned dark blue, which proved the presence of blood. Such a result made the public more convinced that Lindy was not innocent. The test showed that it was not only human blood, but also the blood of a baby less than half a year old. Wasn't that suspicious? Moreover, after reviewing the testimony, the prosecution found contradictions in the couple's testimony. Lindy claimed that before her disappearance, Azaria was wearing a cotton jacket with a jumpsuit over it, but the jacket was not found at the scene. The prosecution believed that it was likely that Lindy used it to entice Dingo to disguise it as a dingo attack. Rice Harris, head of the Australian Dingo Foundation, argued that with its size, it was impossible for a dingo to carry such a big babby and run four kilometers away. Thus, the prosecution filed a charge. For some reason, after putting her two sons to bed, Lindy Chamberlain took Azaria to her car and then brutally punctured her neck veins with scissors, leaving her to bleed to death. Then she hid the body somewhere before stripping off the jumpsuit and deliberately throwing it four kilometers away. Such a weird accusation, of course, caused an uproar in public opinion. How could parents do such a cruel thing to their own child? It was so horrifying. The Chamberlains insisted that they were innocent and found evidence. A policeman testified that on the day of the case, he saw paw prints left by dingoes not far from the scene. Spots of blood were also left outside the tent at the scene. There was canine fur on the tent and the jumpsuit, but the couple did not have a dog at the time. Some of the forensic experts involved in the case also agreed that if the scissors pierced the blood vessels in the neck, the blood stains in the car should have sprayed everywhere, rather than a few drops. Both sides disputed the case. After heated court debates, on October 29, 1982, the local court ruled that the couple was guilty of murder. Lindy Chamberlain was sentenced to life imprisonment and Michael Chamberlain was sentenced to one and a half years in prison and a one-year probation. In November of that year, Lindy gave birth to a girl named Dahlia Chamberlain. Dahlia, of course, has never seen her deceased sister. But since she could remember, she knew that her parents had been trying to prove their innocence. They spared no expense in hiring foreign experts to re-examine the evidence. Were the Chamberlains the murderers or the innocent? The key twist in the case was brought about by another accident. Nearly four years after Lindy served her sentence, on February 2, 1986, a British tourist named David Brett, who was a rock climber, disappeared while visiting the Ayers Rock. Later he was found dead from a cliff fall. There was nothing suspicious about his death, as rock climbing itself is extremely risky. However, due to the steepness of the mountain, the police deployed a major team. It took them eight days to find his body. To be specific, his body happened to fall near the lair of a dingo, so it was badly damaged. However, while carefully searching for Brett's body, the police found significantly smaller clothes near the lair, which appeared to have been buried there for a long time. Soon, the police associated it with the Azaria Casey and informed the prosecution of this important evidence. After careful identification, the prosecution confirmed that this was the cotton jacket that Lindy claimed Azaria was wearing and wasn't found at the time. Given that the lair was far away from the scene and frequented by dingoes, there was a slim chance that it was dropped there by someone. 
Then the prosecution came to its senses that the case was wrongly sentenced. Five days later, on February 7, 1986, the Governor of the Northern Territory of Australia issued an order that Lindy Chamberlain was pardoned for the remaining prison term and was released. However, legally, the Chamberlains were still guilty at that point. The Royal Commission of Inquiry into Criminal Justice decided in 1987 to reopen the investigation into the case. In the course of the review, the loopholes left by the prosecution back then were pointed out by the lawyer hired by the Chamberlains, the baby's blood in the car that the prosecution most concerned with was proven not to be the blood of a baby, or even human blood, but a soundproofing material sprayed during the car decoration. The identification method used by the experts at the time was so unreliable, Bob Howsham, a biochemist hired by the Chamberlains, found that the filter paper used by the forensic doctors at the time when exposed to traces of heavy metals, especially copper, could trigger a peroxidase reaction similar to that triggered by blood. And the soil at the scene was rich in heavy metal deposits such as silver, lead, and copper. This was a decisive discovery. Due to negligence, a stupid misjudgment was made. According to the research of wildlife biologist Hans Brenner, he testified that a big dingo could carry a two-month-old baby for several kilometers. In fact, the jacket found in the dingo's lair has proved this. And the blood handprint was the blood trace when the dingo ran with the baby's neck in its mouth. Why did Rice Harris, head of the Australian Dingo Foundation, who testified back then, fiercely oppose the dingo attack theory? The reason behind it is interesting. As for the prosecution's argument that dingo's teeth couldn't tear out holes of that shape, wildlife experts have proved through simulation tests that a large dingo could completely recreate that kind of shape. Moreover, according to the control test, the marks on the jumpsuit were much closer to the samples from the canine bite simulation test. So the prosecution's argument could not withstand scrutiny. In 1988, the prosecution withdrew all charges against the Chamberlains and the Australian government paid them $130,000 in compensation. However, this amount was not even a third of that the couple spent on forensic experts and lawyers over the years. On June 12, 2012, the forensic pathologist made the final conclusion of the case that Azaria died from a dingo attack on August 17, 1980, which was classified as an accidental death. Thus, all the injustice the Chamberlains had suffered was completely removed. Afterward, the Chamberlains got divorced, Michael married a woman named Ingrid, and they had a daughter named Zara Chamberlain in 1996. Although Zara never met her half-sister Azaria, she has had sympathy for her sister's tragedy since she was a child. In 2014, Zara announced that she would engage in wildlife protection in Australia, including the study of dingoes. She said that she felt sorry for what happened to her sister, but she believed that for dingoes, we must remain vigilant, but we cannot exterminate them. Also, we must prevent residents' pet dogs from contaminating the genes of dingoes. She wanted a better balance between humans and wild animals so that incidents like her sister's would never happen. Perhaps this is the best way in memory of Azaria.